Beverly, listen, you shouldn't get mixed up with me, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm no good, okay? <laughs> I finally understand what all the fuss is about, Dallas. Son of a bitch burdened me. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Greetings, guest. Welcome to the patriarchy where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking The Boy Crazy BFF. Well, now you mention it, yeah, you, you seem like you're crazy or you're on drugs. I think it may be safe to say that at some point in our lives, we've all encountered a girl like this, the boy crazy friend. And before we get started, I think we need to level set the definition of what boy crazy is. Merriam-Webster's definition simply reads, very interested in boys, which isn't very helpful. My interpretation of a boy crazy girl is one who crushes on an attractive guy instantaneously. And that's the key word, it's immediate. Any microscopic smidge of attention that they get from a man whom they have even the slightest attraction to sends them spiraling with a mind consumed of thoughts and futures with a man that they barely even know. There's some underlying desperation here. And in my opinion, the term boy crazy and pick me are not synonymous. The boy crazy friend can still be a girl's girl. Her mind just goes to mush when she's crushing on a guy, while the pick me can never be a girl's girl because they often try to place themselves above other women when vying for the attention of men. Bitch, you better be joking. This girl, the boy crazy girl, isn't necessarily a bad person, which is why we're even friends with her to begin with. She's a nice girl, she might be kind, selfless, caring, and giving, but she does have a serious character flaw which makes her dangerous and detrimental to her female cohorts. And we'll uncover why that is through our review of Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise came out in 1991 and was directed by Ridley Scott and written by Callie Corey. It's about two friends from the Midwest who are about to embark on a weekend girls trip and things go awry after Thelma, played by Virginia Davis, experiences a sexual assault from a guy outside a bar and her best friend Louise, played by Susan Sarandon, abruptly ends his life after witnessing the situation. So instead of going to the mountains like they originally planned, now the pair are on the run. So Thelma, even though she's married, the character of this woman is completely boy crazy. And to be fair, she might not have been this way if her husband wasn't a total asshole and they had a loving and caring relationship. But that's the situation. Any cute guy that she meets, she's immediately enamored by their good looks and charming words and automatically opens up to them. And we all know just because someone is attractive and has good banter, that doesn't equate to them being a good person. But Thelma is apparently too sheltered to understand this. We see this initially at the bar when they first meet Harlan. After he approaches the two young women who are trying to enjoy their drinks, Thelma immediately starts telling both her and Louise's business to this complete stranger. And when Louise sets some boundaries and clocks Harlan's game right away, Thelma actually had the nerve to call her jaded when she was really just being smart and intuitive. Thelma is way too trusting, and to be clear, we are not victim-blaming here, as the SA that Thelma would experience later that night was due to Harlan's bad character and intentionally taking advantage of a vulnerable woman. But this narration is simply to highlight the consistent pattern of behavior in which Thelma is too trusting of strange men way too soon, and how her friend Louise finds herself as a casualty of Thelma's boy craziness. So this behavior of Thelma's boy craziness appears again when they meet hitchhiker JD while on the run for Harlan's murder. So JD is attractive, I mean it's young Brad Pitt, and Thelma's yet again gushing over another polite and handsome young man in a cowboy hat. So initially Thelma lobbies to give JD a ride, Louise shuts it down immediately, as she should have because they have way bigger issues now. Probably not a good idea. But Thelma labors on about how polite he was and she just wished they'd given him a ride. Did you 
Did you see how polite he is? She feels sweet. Thelma? What? And rewatching this movie and knowing what predicament this would put them in really pisses me off. Like, this girl just has no instincts. Her instincts are just off. Like, she has no situational awareness whatsoever. So they see JD again on the road, and she starts whimpering like a little puppy dog, and Louise eventually gives in to her badgering about JD, and they give the man a ride against her, Louise's better judgment. And once again, with JD, Thelma starts pouring her business out to a complete stranger, which is why I think these men pick up on her vulnerabilities and see her as an easy target to take advantage of because she's just an open book. And we all know what happens. JD charms himself into her motel room. He tells her exactly who he is. I'm a robber. And basically how he's about to con her. Well, see, first you pick your place, right? Uh -huh. Then I just sit back and I watch it for a little while. Wait for that right moment to make my move, see? But does she take heed? No. JD gets her so d dizzy that she's walking around on cloud nine. Hi. Nothing. Got messed up. And leaves him in the room with $6,600 in cash. Tell me you left him alone in the room. Because all of their money has now been stolen by JD due to Thelma's boy craziness, airheadedness, stupidity, lack of good sense. Choose whichever phrase or word you want. Oh, God damn it! Now, she has the bright idea to commit even more felonies, drawing more attention to themselves from the crime that they were originally trying to escape. Thelma's openness bites her once again when JD informs the authorities of their plans to head to Mexico. And he only knew this because Thelma told a completely trustworthy convicted felon of this information. In the end, they drive off a cliff trying to escape the authorities, Thelma's idea, and that's the end of them. These two had a ride or die friendship dynamic and there's nothing wrong with that. We all need friends who've got our back no matter what. And it's very admirable that Louise was such a good friend to Thelma and has her back no matter the circumstance. But in real life, you have to make sure that the people that you hang with have basic common sense and aren't so desperate for male attention and validation that they put you in harm's way or in an uncomfortable situation due to their actions. The lesson in this, as women, we need to really be mindful of the company that we keep and we need to keep and maintain a healthy distance from the boy crazy friend altogether. It may not be intentional, but they are extremely dangerous and as seen in Thelma and Louise will gleefully, albeit unknowingly, put you in harm's way for a bit of attention. My dad. All we were doing was making out. I and mean, I never go past second base with a guy I just met, which means nothing below the waist. So I want to switch gears and briefly talk about the film Riding in Cars with Boys and how the main character Bev and her boy crazed nature nearly ruined her life. So if you haven't seen it, Riding in Cars with Boys came out in 2001 and stars Drew Barrymore and the late Brittany Murphy. This movie is actually based on the autobiography of Beverly Donna Frio, which I didn't know prior to researching this video. But this isn't fiction, it's real life and a prime lesson in how being boy crazy can send your life off the rails. So the main character, Bev, has been obsessed with boys since the age of 11. And as a teenager, she has a crush on this guy named Sky Barrister. And when she goes to this party, is rejected by him. But then she falls for the first dim-witted guy who's nice to her, Ray. You are beautiful. This guy would eventually knock her up and they'd have a shotgun wedding and her life is actually downgraded and goes downhill as a result of being attached to him. And the movie, based off her memoir, is essentially about her trying to dig herself out of this hole. I want to highlight that when Ray and Bev first meet, he doesn't put on any kind of act. And he tells her flat out who he is and that she shouldn't get mixed up with him. But for whatever reason, she sleeps with him anyway. This is something very on par with how a boy crazy girl would act. Always living in the moment and not thinking of how those momentary actions will have an effect on their future. And what's strange about Bev is that she's actually very smart and is fully aware that he derailed her life. After she breaks the news that she's pregnant and he proposes, she doesn't want to marry him. But she marries him anyway after pressure from her parents and it also being the 1960s. 
we had a boy. So he's gonna grow up and be just like me. <laughs> so she ends up with a husband who's an alcoholic and sometimes goes to work and they live in public housing. It's definitely not the nice, quaint suburban environment in which she grew up in. They don't have a lot of money. Her relationship with her dad is now estranged due to her bad choices. And that's her life. It's chaotic because of her partner's instability. And ultimately, it's chaotic because of her desperate need for attention and her boy-crazy nature as a teen. She eventually does leave Ray when her son is about nine, noting that they'd never have a chance in life if she stayed with him. And we're always happy to see a course correcting moment. And she even wrote a memoir that turned into a movie about her life. So she capitalized off of her teenage stupidity. But this is not the ending that most women get. And again, her story should serve as a cautionary tale for young women everywhere about what happens when you let your hormones get the best of you. Beverly Donofrio's memoir, Riding in Cars with Boys, should be on everyone's high school or junior high school reading list, in my opinion. So let me know your thoughts about the boy crazy friend. Have you ever had a friend like this? Share your thoughts down in the comments, and I want to thank everyone for all of your support thus far. The last few videos have really seemed to resonate with a lot of people, and I'm happy to see that. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more. Signing off now, your friend Dom.